Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Comfort Level Podcast. I'm Maddie, and I'm here with... Brandon, your boy, and your boy, Steph. Steph's been seen again, and I miss my cousin. Huh? That was I miss really my good. cousin. What's he doing? I miss my cousin. Hey, because you miss your cousin, you want to listen to a story? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. All right. He's in Japan right now. I miss my cousin. That's what he's doing. And he just misses him. I knew that. I just wanted to make sure they knew that. Yeah. We told him last week, but yeah, Sam's still in Japan. Oh he's taking a sweet time. I wish I could stay in Japan for that I long. know. That's crazy. Miss my cousin. I think I'm more jealous than anything. Of course, I'm sad, but I'm like, he's going to come back. But yeah. I was being dramatic, but I think I got something in my eye now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm ready for this story. You ready? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I'm good. Story number one. Am I the asshole for being embarrassed of my girlfriend's cosplay? Hmm. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. But... I feel like the outfit's probably just bad, but it's your girl, man. Can't just leave it out there stranded. That ain't fair. That ain't cool. I'm going to say yes in certain situations and no in another one, right? <laughs> so I would say yes. If you, if you knew she cosplayed, right, and you stayed in that relationship and you weren't okay or you didn't like the fact of her cosplaying like say say you figured out it was like furry or something you was like mm. and you still stayed in the relationship it's your fault for staying there instead of being like you know let's just not do this because this ain't gonna work for me yeah rather than being you know mature but if you didn't know and all of a sudden like you dating for a while and all of a sudden she just pulls out of some cosplay that you had no idea about you're like whoa i would say not really yeah like because at that point now it's like Okay, now we need to have the conversation of, what, what, what are we going to do? Because I don't like this. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were going to say at first, like, bro, you knew she was a furry. Like, that's the problem. And no, I was no. going to, like, fully support that. But then you kind of went on with, like, a more better, like, realistic thing. And I was like, I guess I could support that, too. Yeah. <laughs> you know who would say the other one? The, Sam. The Sam. Yeah, Sam would say that. Sam Your would. cousin? 100%. My cousin. Am I the asshole for being embarrassed of my girlfriend's cosplay? My 25 male girlfriend, 24 female, had a double mastectomy five years ago. She had breast cancer and thankfully made a full recovery. Unlike a lot of women, she didn't have any reconstructive surgery. This was before I met her. I'm a big anime nerd and last weekend I invited her to a small anime con with me. She's seen a few episodes of my favorite shows, but she's not into anime. She does like cosplay though and she works seasonally as a sound effects artist at a haunted house near us. So when I asked her to go to the con with me, she asked if she could cosplay. And I said, sure. She got very excited and said I was going to love her costume. So I'll admit, I thought she was going to do something sexy for me. Well, not exactly. The day of the convention comes and she shows up at my house cosplaying Dobby from MHA. My Hero, is that my Hero Academia? Who's Dobby? Did I say it right? Yeah. Which one's Dobby? Dobby. Oh. <laughs> He's like the... <laughs> I don't think I don't think you got that far actually. Oh, okay. But if I could just interject, that is a fire cosplay option. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh yeah. I do like anime and that was that's fire. Specifically a look he has later in the manga. It's a long white coat over white pants, no shirt. Her entire chest was exposed, and she obviously spent hours applying burn makeup. She has short hair that she dyes constantly. This time she bleached it white and dyed a few streaks red. I wasn't expecting her to show up without a shirt. Her burn scar makeup only covered half of her chest, so you could clearly see her mastectomy scars. It wasn't a very attractive costume, especially since she'd gone all out with the scars and made them look raised and kind of realistic. We went to the con, and while a lot of people came up and took photos with her, I noticed several others looking at her chest. That evening, she said I'd been quiet all day, and I honestly told her that I was a little embarrassed that she was flaunting her mastectomy scar like that. She got mad and said that she was making the best of her situation and said that I was being insensitive and she's been distant ever since. I'm starting to feel guilty. 
Am I the asshole? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You're going to tell me she put all that work into her her costume, her cosplay, and everything. And then she built her own scars into the cosplay. And you're upset that she's showing the scars? Yeah. Or even the fact that he's like, oh, no, my girlfriend didn't look sexy for me. It's right. like, well, yeah, she has more value than just looking like a nice, like a hot young thing that you can walk around the con with. You know, like you're saying, she had put all this time into making a really cool outfit that worked well with, you know, the mastectomy that she went through. She's trying to make the best of her situation. And I also feel like it just shows how insecure he was because he was like looking at people just trying to like see if they were judging him. They're like, yeah, I noticed a few people looking at her chest. It's like, well, yeah, she because she survived cancer. You know, she's a survivor. Like, what the heck is wrong with you that you just see her as an object? My bet is they're not going to last long. <laughs> no. After that, yeah. But it's like... Well, you guys both said, but two, like... It's a fire cosplay. <laughs> like, yeah. how are you just going to get mad at... Especially if you watch My Hero Act. She wasn't into anime, and she did this with you mm -hmm. and put herself 100% into the process of doing it. And you're mad because she didn't look sexy? But she looked fire? Yeah. What? Fire? Get it? Fire, Dobby? In my academia fits. Uh, my bad. Um, my nerd is showing. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it just sounds like you have a really cool girlfriend that wanted to yeah. be excited about your interests. Isn't Literally. that something that like everybody wants in a relationship? Yes. Is your partner and being great. like, I'm not really into this, but because you're into it, I will give some effort. Like Bro. she went above and beyond. Bro. That is so attractive in a woman. Like, right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Be like, I don't really care about it, but I'll do it with you. Mm -hmm. it's funny because i think that's how my hair academia started for you yeah you weren't into it and then i was like you gotta watch the show though so. I, i'm not i'm not up to date anymore because i was waiting for the uh, english dub and then i just kind of stopped watching it but yeah there was a point where i was like are you guys not on season five yet and i was like i can't talk to anybody about season four this is crazy she I got remember, ahead of me i remember that <laughs> that's crazy yeah Okay, so there was a top comment on there. Facts. Uh, oh, how dare your girlfriend not have a pretty little cosplay outfit? Obviously, she has not gotten the message that her only worth is if she caters to the male gaze. Yes, you're the asshole. Mm. Um, mm. Another one says... Amen. In, in quotes, for me, being the key phrase here, told me everything that I needed to know about OP. Uh, another one. I was sold on OP being the asshole with, in quotes, she didn't get reconstructive surgery like a lot of other women do. I was fairly certain this post would be about boobies at this point. He's into anime and wanted a sexy costume, then said out loud that she shouldn't show the scars from kicking cancer's ass. I mean, holy crap. Yeah. She just didn't meet his expectations, apparently. Right. And his expectations were the wrong ones. His expectations are the anime girls that yeah. he either sees or creates in his head because isn't that a thing that, that i feel like has been talked about at least at our church is like for some men when they go to marry their wife they have to take the image that they created in their head and like Divorce get away it. with that mm -hmm. because the person that they're gonna marry is not the person that they've been thinking about like all their life i think some women need to do that too though it's like yes. in general people just need to not like lower their standards as in like oh just settle for something you don't like but like lower your standards is something that's like realistic to what you can get to if anything i wouldn't say lower expectation probably correct it there yeah that's yeah. better that's a better way yeah, to say it that's a better way to say it um i was gonna say something too oh i feel like he's an incel in the making yeah i mean he doesn't have his girlfriend anymore Whoop. he's about to be involuntarily celibate yeah <laughs> that's funny that's what it stands for Invo I didn't involuntarily celibate. I incel. just thought it was a word. Yeah, that's what, yeah, but it's that's what it's short for. The more you know. It's stories like these that just make me so angry, but it's also just a form of ignorance. Like he's so into this. Like I literally think the woman he has in his head is a cartoon. Yeah. Ew. <laughs> So I, I've never thought that was possible. Yeah. But you saying that like it it makes sense in this situation. 
Next story? Yeah. Am I the asshole for not paying any child support? Watcha? Hey, yo! <laughs> You're like, come on, with that title? Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Your guys' faces were both like, okay, all right. <laughs> I, I, if the court ordered it, then yes. <laughs> if the court didn't order it and you're actually taking care of your kids without the court having to f- order it, then no. But if the court ordered it, then yes. <laughs> Retweet. <laughs> For real. But uh, what's the word? Facts. All right. Facts. All right. All right. That would have been perfect, but I didn't know what the you word was. You gotta say just just in that mind, critique. Facts. Okay. No, it's facts, not K. Yeah. (laughs) Am I the asshole for not paying any child support? My ex-girlfriend, Claire, 35 female, got pregnant while we were dating. Although she told me she just wanted to be friends, I was ready to be a father. However, she met someone else, Becca, who didn't want me around, so they asked me to cancel my paternal rights. At that time, I was really torn because I wanted to be there for my child, but I also felt that if they didn't want me around, it was best to waive my rights. After fighting for a while, I eventually gave up because it was clear that they didn't want me there. Fast forward 13 years later, Claire and Becca are going through some stuff and they want me to pay child support. However, the courts have already ruled that since I waived my paternal rights, I'm not legally obligated to pay child support. Despite this, Claire is calling me a bastard and a deadbeat, and she's even calling my family and getting them involved. While I understand her frustration, I don't think it's appropriate for her to be involving my family in this matter. So little, but so... (laughs) Yeah. Yep. Oh, wow. Um... No, you're not, but I can understand his internal conflict. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's a there's a thing for that on that form, but yeah, that uh that sucks mm-hmm. because he was really ready to but I feel like at that point could he start fighting back for custody then? If that's the claim they want to make. It's like if you're gonna make this worse, we can make it real worse. Yeah. Because he wanted to be a father. Well, I don't think they have any legs to stand on, Mm -hmm. at least with, you know, like the court already ruled it. But just because he literally does not have a right to see this kid, he doesn't have a choice to do anything. It's like it's already been 13 years. They probably just said it was like a donor or something. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Who knows what they said about him? No, you're not the asshole. Like you literally like you said, you wanted to be in their lives. They didn't want to be there. They're probably going to make the relationship between you and your child up like frustrating. Um, so you made the, whatever decision it was going to be, it was going to be difficult, but you made the difficult choice to just waive the rights, which means you waive the right of taking care of that child. So why are you, why are they even asking you to pay child support? Yeah. that's, that's And wild. then turning it back on you and being like, you're a deadbeat dad. What? I'm not even a dad anymore. <laughs> like, what do you mean? It's not my kid legally. Yeah, so. Only biologically. And I'm sure he probably doesn't even see that kid at all. So, yeah. yeah. It's like, all right, you're not even looking in the mirror anymore. Sadly. Yeah. That's 13 years. Mm-hmm. 13 years without it. And now, that is wild. I don't know, though. Um, I think some sort, he feels some sort of guilt for doing it. So I think that's where his internal conflict is coming from of, am I really a bad guy for not paying it? Cause it's like, it technically is my child, even though I waive the rights. Um, yeah. I mean, it definitely sounds like he wanted to be in the kid's life. So yeah, I'm sure he probably feels some type of way about it. Yeah. That is a tough situation. Yeah. Steph, what do you think? I kind of feel like in the current situation, not the a-hole, right? But like at the same time, you did give up the right to your kid, which is kind of like not, I mean, it's like, why would you even do that in the first place? I mean, like I get it. It was complicated because they were like trying to get you out. But at the same time, 
that's how a lot of situations can be where it's like, I'm just going to get you out. Not not like always, but a lot of the time it can be trying to get you out of the kids' lives, either A, so it can get child support, or B, just because I don't like you as the other parent and I just want you to be out of the kid's life and also out of my life. Mm-hmm. Where at the end of the day, it's like both y'all came together to make this child. Um, so like you both should be there to support this child, however any way it is. So it's like the fact that you even gave up the rights to the child is just like, uh, that was your first mistake, I think, in mm-hmm. my personal opinion. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Where it's like, like I said, in the current situation, not really an a-hole, but like in that situation where you gave up the rights to the child, it's kind of like, bro, you, <laughs> you made yourself. that child. like, yeah. <laughs> And you gave up the rights to it. So it's like, um kind of an a-hole in that situation a little bit in my opinion like i said it's different though i feel like because she's given him the choice to go away right but if he if she's doing this now 13 years after the fact how much worse do you think his life would have been if she was a baby mama if he decided i'm not gonna waive my rights but and I, I see what you mean, but at the end of the day, who you sleep with is who you sleep with. Mm-hmm. And he made that choice before they she got pregnant to sleep with this woman who could have been crazy or could have not been crazy and ended up creating a child with somebody that now you're tied to for the rest of your life. Yeah. So I see what you mean, but at the same time, it's like, this could have been avoided if he didn't do that, if that's what his concern was. Yeah. Claire sounds like chaotic evil. I'm not going to lie, though. <laughs> That is insane. 13 yeah. years, and that's what you do? Uh-huh. So, top comment, not the asshole. They didn't want you to be a dad, so you aren't a dad. They're only regretting their decision now because they need money. If you consider helping out financially, you need to insist that you also be allowed to have a relationship with your kid with no secrets about why you haven't been around. The kid deserves to know that the only reason you weren't around is because of their moms. I can yeah. agree with that. Oof. say that and then another comment says they they mentioned uh about how the the top person's comment comment you need to insist that you'll be allowed to have a relationship with your kid with no secrets about why you haven't been around and then they commented no doubt they poisoned the poor kid's mind about why their father left so at this point it's risky to even consider having a relationship with the child the child would be a teen now and teens especially can be cruel and heartless if they think you wrong them yeah Hurt people, hurt people. And that's yeah. crazy because, like, even think about it. I feel like even if the mom had come out and said, like, hey, so this is what happened the whole time. Just I, I wanted him out. Not not that he, whether, like, say, like, she did poison the kid's mind and say, like, he didn't want you. He took off on his own. And then it's like, as a teen, now you come to the kid like, hey, I was lying the whole time. <laughs> Either the kid, A, ain't going to believe you, or B, they're going to be mad at both the parents now because they're going to be, like, confused they're gonna be mm-hmm. mad at the world right it's that's gonna a be villain like, arc i'm mad at my mom i don't know how i feel about my dad and then i don't know maybe it's mad at the other mom too for also lying it's just like mm. <laughs> next story am i the asshole for asking my brother to pay thirty thousand dollars for my engagement ring probably that's a lot of money thirty thousand dollars and notice that's pay 30,000 not loan 30,000 yeah I mean it could be still a loan and they just didn't explain it in the story because they're bad at making titles or they're good at making titles for clickbait yeah Who knows? but probably making or asking asking my brother to pay $30,000 I mean what's the worst I mean you can always ask anything Maddie, oh hey, Maddie can God. you can you pay $30,000 for an engagement ring for me real quick no. Okay. <laughs> Just thought I'd ask. Yeah. Another satisfying awkward moment. <laughs> <laughs> I hosted a family dinner over the weekend. My brother brought my nephews four and eight over as well. I used to wear my engagement ring all the time, but lately I keep it in my walk-in closet and mainly wear it for special occasions. While I was cleaning up the dinner table, my nephews went to play while the adults were still in the outdoor kitchen area. My brother was not supervising his kids. 
During this time, my nephews went into the master bedroom without anyone knowing and started playing with everything, including my engagement ring. When we came to look for them, they panicked because they know they aren't supposed to be upstairs and ran into the master bathroom and flushed my ring. We called a plumber in case it was somehow in the U-trap of the toilet and not actually gone, but nope, unfortunately it was gone for good. We still had the original receipt, so I called my brother, I emailed him a scanned copy as proof of the cost, and I asked him to reimburse me for the ring my nephew flushed. Immediately, he started calling me an asshole because we were family and he was just a child. He had refused to repay the cost of my ring. I told him I will be taking him to court for this, and now my entire family is blowing up my phone saying families shouldn't sue each other and to just let it go. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like these are the shortest stories, but it's just like the the what the heck? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, hmm. I'll jump in. The fact that the brother, I mean, this is also one sided, so we don't know what the whole story is. But the fact that the brother wasn't even like, hey, I'll reimburse part of it or I'll maybe get you another ring or something. At least, yeah. at least like, from the one side of the story, we don't know. But it's like, that's even worse. That means that the engagement ring was a gift mm-hmm. from, is this a woman? Yeah, yeah. Right. Because <laughs> normally the woman gets the engagement ring. Mm-hmm. So that's how I was like, I don't even know, Brandon, worse. kind of be expecting a surprise in the next few weeks. Oh, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's even worse, where it's like, that means, I'm assuming another man <laughs> bought her a ring and then her brother's kids lost it. Yeah. And it didn't offer any sort of way of reimbursement to say, hey, my bad the kids was doing what they wasn't supposed to do and like just just dropping it from what the rest of the family's saying is like no you can't just you can't just drop it yeah it's like, all right bet you drop thirty thousand dollars just drop it find it somewhere leave it i don't know somewhere not anywhere that's any uh productive I, burn it i guess i don't know you burn thirty thousand dollars see how you feel seriously yeah <laughs> like <laughs> I was just going to say, I mean, she didn't mention it, so I guess they could have been said, but did he even apologize to his sister for his son doing that? I understand that he's four years old and, you know, he was scared about the situation, but at the end of the day, that child is your responsibility, so whatever they do, you are responsible for. I get that it's family, but I think even your compromise, not saying that she would take it, but that's something where it's like, listen... We don't have that much money right now to give you. We have $10,000. We can buy you a nice ring. Like, we will make it up to you, like, in the future. Like, I understand if you don't want us to come over, you know, anymore or whatever. We will just take at her. I don't know. Like, the fact that the only reasoning is, like, listen, he's a kid. It's like, yeah, but still, Mm -hmm. you know, is pretty big thing that he just did. And even, did you discipline the kid afterward, too? Your kid made a $30,000 mistake. At four years old. (laughs) It's going to need more than a spanking right now. More than time out. To appease me. Yeah. 30,000 years of time out. <laughs> <laughs> I have Sorry, a question. Buddy, you're locked up. <laughs> Do you guys think people should normalize suing their own family? Uh, I don't know. Money between family is so messy. Yeah. Like, there is a, there's people that I know, that we all know where they even recommended like you know how sometimes if you uh you have family members that are going to ask you for money what they do is every single year they budget for how much money they're going to be able to give out to the family whoever needs money yes 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 and then once it hits that cap no we my cannot bad, give you G anything already else gave it out yeah even that because because my family doesn't do that and i see like family members giving money to people and being upset. I'm like, why? And because then they're in a financial situation because they gave it to somebody else. I'm like, why did you just do that? Mm-hmm. I can't even imagine doing that, but I, I don't, I mean, I don't know what else you would do. Cause it sounds like the family would just be like, yeah, I mean, it sucks. You lost $30,000, you know? I think it depends on not just how you grew up, but also like what's your adult relationship like with your family or more of your specific, well, yeah, your family. It's like, if you grew up as an adult, like there was one story that we covered where it was uh, the sister was stealing, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, if that's 
what the, your relationship has been like with them as an adult the whole time. And it's like, they just keep doing things to you, not treating you like family. It's like, I mean, they're family by blood, but that's the only reason they're family. So it's like, at the end of the day, it's like, oh, if I sue them, it's, it's, it's just another person to me, you know? But if it's like, you've been close forever and it was just this one incident or just like a few incidences, but it was like nothing really serious. And then all of a sudden, oh, my kids lost a ring and I don't want to pay you. It's like, uh, you could come to a conclusion where suing is right, but at the same time, it's like, I don't know. Is it worth it at that point too? Yeah. I think another compromise that could have been done is potentially going to the family first Mm -hmm. before being like, oh, you flushed my $30,000 ring down the toilet, don't want to pay, sue. Mm -hmm. Because it, I don't know, like, I'm putting myself in their shoes. If it were Elise, like Elise had a kid and they did that. And she's like, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. I'm going to my mom and dad. I'm going to everybody, putting everything on the table. This is what happened. She doesn't want to pay. My next step is probably to sue. What do you guys suggest? Because then if if it's really a tight-knit family, they're going to do everything in their power to make sure that A, our relationship's not messed up by the end of it, but B, that I get my $30,000 ring. (laughs) Yeah, but I mean, at a certain extent, like somebody like, let's just keep going with the example of Elise. If they're not going to pay it and they're an adult, I don't really think, you know, in this situation, your mom or dad would necessarily get them to pay for it. It would just at that point be like, OK, how are we going to recover this family after these two go at it? Mm-hmm. Like, it sounds like he's at an impasse and she's like, I'm going to like you said, I'm going to get my thirty thousand dollars back. Yeah. Yeah. Because that was not wasted over a simple mistake by a four-year-old. Even putting ourselves in the shoes of, like, these people, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm like, if my brothers had kids and did that, and they were just like, look, I can't can't afford $30,000 back. My brothers probably couldn't. I mean, they couldn't cough it up immediately. Mm -hmm. Maybe over time they could. But I, I would understand, like, all right, I understand you can't pay up immediately, even if we all chipped in, we probably couldn't all pull, pull up thirty thousand dollars immediately. Your now, <laughs> right? <laughs> so it's like, um, kind of like you said, where do we go from here? But at the same time, it's like, why, why, why is your your uh, your fiance spending thirty thousand dollars on a ring <laughs> when your family can't even afford that? <laughs> like, like, nah, don't give me a thirty thousand dollar ring. <laughs> we need, we need to save this money. <laughs> hey, shoot, that might be the uh, the brother situation, but it doesn't sound like it's her situation. Yeah, she she done upgraded. Like, Honestly, she said hey, thirty thousand dollar ring. That's my expectation. Honestly, I mean, me in different shoes because I, I ain't nobody gonna give me a thirty thousand dollar ring, and if they do, I don't know what I'm gonna say. But uh, <laughs> I would be like, listen, no, we gotta do something else with this money. <laughs> like, we can't do no thirty thousand dollar ring. <laughs> But I think that is because we are where we're at in True, life, where we're yeah. like thirty thousand dollars could be used for like a car, a house, a honeymoon, like all of those things. Thirty thousand dollars we could add it to this, 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 and this. But there are people that are wealthy enough that'll they're they're like thirty thousand dollars. That's an investment that's going to stay in the family. Well, and to think not about anymore. it, too, got flushed. To counteract my argument, <laughs> counteract it myself. Uh, maybe it's one of those things where one of the siblings. I don't know, got popular on YouTube or something. Boom, they gone. <laughs> they got all this money. And the rest of the family's not like poor, but they're not also at the same income level at the rest of the, that, that, that person's at too. So it's like. Mm-hmm. Why is the, the, why is she suing? If he they're paid a, for it. They're a unit, you know, they're together. Yeah, wouldn't he? Not yet. Like, they're engaged. They ain't married. Yeah. Wouldn't I think they're I thought they're oh maybe, maybe not. Wouldn't it be better it'd make more sense for him to do it because he paid for it. But it, it was gifted to her. So it now it's her to her, her ring. Gotcha. Gift receipt, duh. Um okay, so there's a few edits. Oh. Um edit number one. No, the ring was not insured. I found out Ooh. the day after my nephew flushed it. My husband <gasps> so they are married. Oh, oh my bad. My okay. husband says he forgot it and in the end never actually insured it. Edit number two, my brother says he does not have the money to repay even $100 per month and has refused any kind of repayment plan. He says I live in a nice enough house and if I want a replacement, I should just sell my car. 
And at number three, my brother to this day has not truly apologized. It was a Canadian sorry, sorry, not sorry. He said kids will do what is normal for kids and they shouldn't be held responsible for a ring. They were supposed to be, they were supposed to supervise their kids outdoors with the rest of the family while I was busy cleaning up. Edit number four. I don't believe for a second my brother and his wife cannot pay for the cost of the engagement ring. They don't make anything near my husband, but they have a combined income of around $250,000. They don't pay rent or anything because my parents gifted them their old house valued at $3.5 million in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Back when I bought my parents a new home years ago, there is no mortgage on the home my brother lives in. The only thing my brother and his wife would have to pay for is the cost of raising their children, normal bills, and food. I feel so distraught because my ring holds great sentimental value. I've already been speaking with my husband's family lawyer, but at this point, I'm ready to hire a PI to find out if they really don't have the money. So, so that's what I'm saying. These people are rich, rich. And they sue. 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 Because it's like, yeah, we can, I, <laughs> right, we can give, 3.5 million. We can give the benefit of the doubt at the end of the day. Like maybe he doesn't have enough money, but she just said it. No, 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 no. But the fact that they said you should sell your car to right. get your new ring. When you got gifted a house at 3.5 million, you could sell your house and get a new house and pay for the ring. Mm -hmm. If it so comes to it, if you really can't afford it, you got to make ends meet. Because right. you didn't take care of your kids. The entitlement. He said, I can't even pay you $100 a month. $100 a month. And you got to do... You don't have a mortgage. What do you mean? I don't know if you guys know this, but my rent is more than $100 a month. <laughs> Most people's rent is more than $1,000 a month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this man lives in a gifted $3.5 million home. And he can't pay $100 a what month. Kind of, what kind of school you send your kids to? Is that where all your money going? <laughs> yeah, you got to. Bro. You're a bad steward. You're a at, bad brother. At this point. Bad steward, bad brother, yeah. Um, bad dad. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. About that although one. I will say overall suing will um, probably hurt the family more than help, especially financially. Yeah. Because I, you know. We see it all the time where, like, somebody dies and then all the kids are fighting over the, the will because there was none, all the possessions, and then they sue each other, and then half the stuff goes to nobody <laughs> except for all the lawyers and court fees and all that. Hey, man, them parents need to figure that out, too, because mm -hmm. knowing how this is going to affect them, mm. that will is going to be... Yeah. And and uh, this post is locked but I didn't necessarily know why it was locked, but now it makes sense. And it was only, it's not even 30 days old. Oh. This is, this is freshly, am I the asshole? Mm. Um, top comment, not the asshole. His circus, his monkeys. He wasn't watching them. That's 100% on him. He should definitely replace your ring. As for all the family who are blowing up at you, it's easy when it didn't happen to them to preach forgiveness. Ignore them. Also, also eight and four are more than old enough to know better. My three-year-old knows not to touch someone else's things in their home without asking. Sheesh. Choices have consequences, and sometimes those consequences are expensive. Sorry this happened to you. Oh, oh, the, the next comment says, they quote saying eight and four are more than old enough to know better. They said they did know better. That's why they ran and flushed it. Facts. Am I the asshole for telling my sister that a comment she made is exactly why her marriage crashed and burned? Oof. <laughs> oh, my Wait. God. <laughs> Wait. Ah. <laughs> uh, okay. If your sister is... And, I, and I'm going to say this, not not ignorant, because ignorance, you just that means you just didn't know. If she was foolish in whatever comment she was making, and she knew that she shouldn't have been saying that kind of stupid stuff, and it was a hard pill for her to swallow because she just won't recognize that everything, she, not everything, but a lot of that she did caused the marriage to crash, then no. But if it's like she been going through it, 
and like she just made mistakes and she's like man just trying to get over this whole relationship and everything then yes because that's like yo <laughs> there's better ways to convey <laughs> hey you shouldn't say that <laughs> I feel like this is going to be one of those rage-filled moments. <laughs> so I'm going to just say it. it's always that variable where you just don't know what the other person said first. Right. You know? But, uh, sorry. It's probably going to be yes. Yeah, probably. You probably are. Am I the asshole for telling my sister that a comment that she made is exactly why her marriage crashed and burned? My sister has been staying with my husband and I, men in our late 20s, for the last week and some change. She and her husband have initiated the divorce process, and she said she doesn't want to stay alone right now, which I completely understand. It would be very hard to go from living with a partner to a completely silent house. I opened our home to her before I found out why the marriage didn't work out. Now that the two of us have had multiple conversations about it, I'm a little bit uncomfortable. There was no infidelity. There was no big scandal. What she told me is that her husband wasn't having sex with her enough. The things she had been saying have floored me. She says without sex, the two of them were basically just like roommates. She said she had been pushing for him to get a hormone imbalance test done because while they were still having sex, it wasn't enough. She said he had begun resisting even normal touches from her because from his perspective, all she thought about was sex, which apparently isn't true. I'm not sure I believe that. I can elaborate in the comments, but overall, it just left me feeling sad for her ex and the disrespect of saying sex is the only thing that separates a partner from a roommate, not even a friend. I've done my best to be supportive, but I can't relate to the thought process at all. If my partner told me tomorrow that he wasn't up for sex for the next few weeks, months, or longer, I would just take care of myself and respect that. I love him, and I want him to be the person I do life with forever. This all came to a head last night. My husband and I were having a typical lazy Saturday night, catching up on some shows and chatting while we lounge on the couch. His legs were in my lap and I was kind of absentmindedly massaging his feet and rubbing his ankles. This was an innocent gesture. My sister came in, saw me doing it, and made a joke along the lines of, Ah, OP, I didn't know you were into feet. Or, I didn't know you had a foot fetish. The exact wording escapes me. I couldn't help but feel put off at her sexualizing the gesture. Intimacy can be sexual, but it doesn't have to be. I told her so and then said, referring to her divorce, you sexualizing every interaction is why you're in the situation you are now. She called me a dick and left the room. I already know it was a little harsh, but I'm unsure if it was tough love or too much. Hmm. I think it matters with the tone mm -hmm. of like how he said it. Because if it was like a crazy tone, it's like, come in with a a, a lighthearted joke and then he uh just snaps back with that it's like what the heck like i was just it was a, a, a joke or whatever or you know but like yeah you're, you're not but there's this thing i call it the old uh <laughs> wise black man uh effect where if you uh if you talk to an old wise black man, you'll be getting lessons you didn't necessarily ask for. Like you'd be like, "Hey, I don't know, my my gas tank is open." He'd be like, "See, listen here, young buck. The one thing about your gas tank being open is you got to fortify your mind." And it's like, "Bro, I did not I just want just close my gas tank. I wasn't asking you for a life lesson. <laughs> and so I feel like it could have been like one of those moments where like he's just saying it like that, like in that tone, like like genuinely good intention. Like I'm trying to help you see yourself. But it's like there's a time and a place for that. And it's funny, too, because I feel like you would potentially see this from a stereotype of men versus women. And like mm -hmm. the guy is just like pestering the wife to like have sex. And she's like, no, I don't want to. So it's really interesting to like see like the woman being like, no, like we need to have sex. Like we like everything is all about what leads to sex. And the fact that the guy is like, can we not? And the fact that she kind of like came for his uh, manhood a little bit when she was like, well, I, we should get you like tested for your hormones or something because 
you need to be having like a higher sex drive. I'm like, you just sound like you're addicted to sex. Like you, it sounds like there's something you need to work on. There is ways and times to be like, okay, listen, this is probably why your relationship's falling apart. But it's, you have to step more carefully about how you approach that. And I mean, like Brandon said, it's like the tone too that you say. So it's like the tone, the timing, all of that could lead up to how it's like, okay, you could be the a-hole just because you decided to say this in a way and at a time that was not appropriate. I have a question though, Mm -hmm. to your theory. Does it make it different that she's on the other side? Like she's the one that started the divorce. She was unhappy in the relationship. What if she's not feeling that? I I forgot that she started. If you started it, then <laughs> I don't. Not to say you don't have a right to be mad, but at the same time, you don't really have a right to be mad because you started a relationship because, or you started a divorce because, in your opinion, you weren't having enough sex with somebody. There's some people that I th- they think they experience love through the physical. And that that's all it is. So the fact that she divorced him because they weren't having sex enough, I think she thought that the love was only just like she was only going to experience the love through the physicality of that relationship. So, i.e., she's unhappy. She's able to do that so easily. And I don't know. I just feel like she's probably not one of those people that just have like that emotional Hitched together. She feels some sort of emotion. And I think she's trying to process what that is, which it is sadness because she doesn't want to be alone. But besides that, like, girl, you need to go heal. I feel like it's almost like entitled to be like, I'm going to end this relationship because we ain't having enough sex. It's like, that's the reason you not just broke up with somebody. You divorce somebody? How are you marrying somebody where the only thing that you see in them is a physical relationship? Because how many times have we heard of like older people in our lives or people that have been married for a longer period of time where they're like, listen, eventually you're going to fall out of love with the person that you're with and you have to choose to continue to love them because that was the um, that was the that was the oath that you made to them. Facts. Like you're going to fall in and out of love of the person that you're with all the time. So top comment, not the asshole. That is a weird thing to say to your sibling and thinking and thinking (laughs) every time you touch your partner, it has to be for sexual reasons is screwed up. You probably could have been nicer, but that's a weird thing to say. Am I the asshole for taking my brother-in-law to small claims court over art supplies? (laughs) I think I'm just going to go into this one. Yeah, just go (laughs) A bit bit out of context. I, 29 male, like to draw and try other mediums as well. As such, I've accumulated a lot of art supplies over the past few years. My wife, Sally, 27 female. My wife, Sally, 27 female, also dabbles a bit. And we have converted one of our rooms in our house to an art studio of sorts. There's easily a few thousand dollars worth of art supplies in that room. And we tend to keep it locked up for that reason. Most important to me are my pencils and markers, which were not cheap. Sally and I had her family over for her aunt's birthday a few weeks back, and my brother-in-law and sister-in-law brought their kids with them, seven female and six male. We had forgotten to lock the door to the room that day. About an hour into the party, I noticed that both kids were nowhere to be seen, so I asked sister-in-law if she knew where they were. She said they were drawing in the other room. I asked my I asked if my wife was with them and she said she just told them which room it was in. I immediately rushed over to the art room and found it was a total mess. Most devastatingly was the fact that all of my markers were ruined because the kids were using too much force causing the tips to fray. I yelled at them to get out and they started crying. My brother-in-law ran over and started yelling at me, saying they're just kids and it's just markers. I told him that the markers alone were $17 a piece, and he said it was stupid for paying that much. Sally tried to defuse the situation, but my brother-in-law started yelling at her too, saying we can't have this much art supplies and not expect kids wanting to use it. I told him he's paying to replace the markers and other supplies they ruined, and he told me to go fuck myself and left. Everyone left shortly after that. 
I totaled up the damage and needed to replace about $375 and found that the kids drew on a piece I had spent the past week working on as well as ruining a finished piece Sally did. I sent him a bill and he blocked me. So I talked with my friend who was a lawyer and had him draft a claim for small claims court and a letter to send to my brother-in-law. I paid him for this, of course. My wife is in agreement about this, but her family has been mobbing us, telling us we're ridiculous over some markers. Only my father-in-law, who is also taking up painting recently, and my other sister-in-law says that brother-in-law has to pay. Am I the asshole? I'm just going to start with this. The world needs more empathy. Because, like, obviously, ain't nobody in the family trying to even think about seeing it from their perspective. They're like, $17 on a marker? That's too expensive. He doesn't owe you anything. It's like, y'all didn't even attempt to look at it from his point of view. He's like, this is my passion. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I am willing to spend $17 on a marker because I do this. (laughs) 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 Like, and it's just... Like, how do y'all just, and, and, and even still, also the brother in law, the fact that he said, F off or F yourself or whatever, and you were in somebody else's house when you said that. You weren't in your house. He wasn't, he wasn't in your house. You were in his house. And you said that to him. I mean, it's different because it's like brother in law and stuff, but like, that's still family in a way where it's like, how dare you mm-hmm. bring your kids over to my house? Let them run around and do whatever they want. Because I invited you into my house and you get mad at me when I come to your kids and say, stop, you can't do that. And you're mad at me because you let your kids do what they want to do in my house? Mm-hmm. Like, no. <laughs> and then you had the nerve to say, F me? <laughs> no. In his own house? <laughs> in my own house that I invited you to. Touching my things that are not toys. Right. Like if you can't appreciate what, if you can't understand and appreciate the price of something, then you don't get to touch it. Mm -mm. Like if, if you invited the kids over and they was on, I don't know, PlayStation, Xbox, and they start banging around the controller, controllers are like, what now? 70, $80 a piece. Mm -hmm. Could you just be like, oh, kids bang controllers around. It's just, they do. No, (laughs) You ain't going to be like, that's what kids do. You're going to be like, no, stop breaking it. Yeah. I think my biggest gripe on this is, to Steph's point, how are you at least, I'm not, th- we're not there yet, but like as a parent, I do not want my kids to have the impression that even if we go to a guest house, you can just run rampant and do whatever. Mm. I don't at least in my mind I can't see even in even if it's like family's houses I can't see um can't see myself allowing my kids to do all that and especially if we're going to be there for a extended a period of time whether it be an hour or a week I don't know my thing is hey what are my kids what are my kids allowed to do here at least that that's something I want to implement implement. I haven't seen it necessarily done and haven't definitely heard any stories about it where it's like, hey, what what's what are you okay with? You know? Cause that could have been avoided had you been, oh, there's this thing over here. He's like, oh, it's actually unlocked, you know? It's like, okay. Hey, we don't we don't touch that room. Mm-hmm. We don't go over there. You can do whatever else you want. Just don't touch that door. And then, I don't know, though, because it's just like, yes, that it's messed up. $325, go ahead and get that money. Facts. Because hobbies are also enough. Because he's not an artist, right? It's his hobby. Hobbies are expensive. You could have avoided all this had you just set boundaries for your children. Yeah, I agree with what you guys are both saying. I think this is crazy, like... I could tell that the sister-in-law had the same audacity that the brother-in-law had because the dad was the the guy was like, where are the kids? Oh, they're in the art room. Oh, is my wife with them? No, I just said they could go in the art room. Why did you just say they could go in the art room? 
So you don't even appreciate that room for what it is either. Cause it doesn't sound like these two people have kids or they're, they're old enough or they don't have like something. There's no kids in that house. So it's like, why would they have an art room for kids to, to play with or mess with? I don't know. I just feel like this is just a classic case of people not understanding, maybe not wanting to understand, like you said, Steph, not wanting to empathize, but like you obviously don't understand what my passion is, which, or hobby, which is, you know, uh, painting, you know, drawing, whatever. And because you don't understand it, you will not appreciate the amount of money that I paid for nice quality things. And because of that, you think it's something that your little kids can come in and touch and ruin. And now you won't pay for the consequences of your kids doing that. Mm -hmm. I think another important thing to notice is, and maybe I'm making assumptions, but the fact that the sister-in-law, he asks, oh, like, where are the kids? Oh, they're in their art room. Is my wife with them? No, I just told them where it is. Which means the sister-in-law knew where the art room was. Mm -hmm. And they kept the art room locked normally. Mm -hmm. Which means she had been over enough to, A, know where the art room is. And B, probably know that it's normally locked. Yeah. So it's like, did you not think, hey, this is a room that's normally locked. I shouldn't just send my kids to this room that's normally locked. There's an update. Kind of a longer, longer update. Oh, boy. First off, holy crap, I did not expect this to blow up. I posted, I figured I'd get a handful of responses and turned off Reddit. I am extremely grateful that so many people took the time and read and respond to this post. I'm going to read as many comments as I can, but I can't read them all. Either way, thank you all. Anyways, last night, my father-in-law called my wife and told us to come over. When we arrived, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law were already there father-in-law sat us down and told us we're figuring this out now and anyone who leaves gets written out of his will brother-in-law asked if he seriously would disinherit brother-in-law asked if he would brother-in-law asked if he would seriously lose his inheritance over markers and father-in-law asked would you seriously rather lose your inheritance than talk this out like adults he called us all childish but figured the threat of court would make brother-in-law admit he was at fault he was mad at me for reacting so nuclear and ruining aunt's B-Day. After an hour and a half of talking to brother-in-law, he said he was sorry and that he would replace the supplies his kids ruined. I apologize for making a scene and Sally and I are taking our aunt out for dinner tonight with father-in-law and an apology. I don't really care about the judgment here since I realized whether or not I was right for taking brother-in-law to court. Hopefully things mend well with my wife's family. Yeah. Father-in-law's. The goat. Goated. The goat. And he had the one-liners, too. <laughs> you trying to lose your inheritance over some markers? <laughs> He's like, you really going to make me take my out of the will for those markers? You trying to get out the will because of markers? <laughs> like, clap back at them. Right. Top comment, not the asshole. Parents need to watch their own kids. How entitled is it to just send them into a room in somebody else's house and tell them to go wild with whatever it is without even asking? Next story. Am I the asshole for continuing to sleep nude despite my neighbors being able to see me in my bedroom? Um. Yes. <laughs> no. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yes. If you have like, or even if you don't, if you don't have window blinds and you just sleep in naked, I feel like you could get in trouble with the law for that. Like if you were just to stand up in your window in the nude, you could probably get in trouble. Peeping toms can get you in trouble? No, not, well, yes, but no. But I mean like, well, I don't think a peeping tom would want you to get in trouble because they just want you to keep standing up in the nude in the window and just peeping. But <laughs> I think if you're like, if I'm walking by your house and I could like look through the window and just like, oh, just look at this house. And then just happen to see you sleeping naked because you don't use blinds or anything. I think that's an issue. But at the same time, it's like if you want to sleep naked, sleep naked. Just have to say, don't 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 expose yourself if it's really easy to see you sleeping naked, though. I mean, I guess. But at the same time, it's like, hey, you're looking at my house. Yeah. You're seeing what I got. Hey, but still, that's what in, like. indecent exposure. Like, like I mean, somebody can't. Is that indecent exposure when I you're inside your house? I think though? it is. 
I think you can get in trouble for being naked in your house as long if you're not covering like your windows like that. Okay. Wait, I, I think it's a E S H. <laughs> Everyone sucks here. Everyone yeah, sucks yeah. here. Okay. Am I the asshole for continuing to sleep nude despite my neighbors being able to see into my bedroom? So I'm a 28 year old dude and I've been living in my house for a few years now. One of the main reasons I chose this place was because my bedroom faced east, allowing me to wake up to the morning sunlight. Most mornings I wake up before my alarm goes off just because the sunlight comes through the window waking me up. There used to be a tree line that provided a natural barrier between my house and any potential neighbors, so I never saw the need for curtains or blinds, along with the fact that they're expensive as hell for the nice ones. Recently, my neighborhood expanded, and most of the tree line my bedroom was facing was cut down to build new houses. So boom. Then there's a house that was built right across from mine, and there's a window that has a clear view into my bedroom. I've always been comfortable sleeping nude, and it wasn't an issue when there was no neighbors around. But not long after the people moved in, the father from the home came over to my house and pretty much told me to stop being nude in front of my windows since his family can see inside my bedroom. He was not nice about it, but he wasn't mean either. Just matter of factly, like he gave me an order and fully expected it to be done. Like I was his kid or his employee. I was somewhat surprised, but understood his concern. So I made an effort to be more mindful of my nudity when in view of the window. I stopped cleaning and making my bed before getting dressed. I'd hop out of bed, walk into my closet and at least put on shorts, then go about my morning chores. That being said, I still sleep nude and I occasionally end up being visible to the neighbors for a brief moment after waking up. The father came over again, leading to an argument between us. I told him I was trying my best to be considerate, but there's only so much I can do and that is my house and I'm not changing my lifestyle because they moved in. He threatened to call the police and said I was being a menace to the neighborhood, whatever the hell that means. So am I the asshole for continuing to sleep nude even though my neighbors can see in my bedroom? I would say no, because if you're if it's like just sleeping nude. Well, OK, <laughs> you could still get curtains like cheap ones. You don't got to get expensive curtains like you was talking on the story. If you can't afford it, then go to it. Don't get it. Just get cheaper ones. And I don't know, halfway cover the so the sun still comes in. But at the same time, it's, if all you're doing is sleeping nude and then you wake up and you, you throw clothes on. So that way people aren't seeing you walk around naked. I would say you're probably not the a-hole because it's like well, you're sleeping comfortably and then you throw clothes on as soon as you wake up so unless you're sleeping like at irregular hours but from the way he's saying it sounds like he go to sleep when it's dark and it comes wakes up when it's light why are you looking in my windows and wondering if i'm wearing clothes when i'm so probably sleeping with all my lights off mm-hmm. <laughs> so that maybe this is more where you're talking about the peeping tom kind of thing where it's yeah. like i'm I'm just, I'm sleeping. Like, you, the lights are off. <laughs> like, yeah. why, why can you see me naked like this? Maybe, maybe the moon shines in there at the perfect time, but at the same time, it's like, if he's sleeping with, when it's dark, then it's like, nah, that's not really that bad because he's just sleeping naked. But if it's like, I mean, like I said, if you're just standing up in your window, walking around naked and all that, that's different. But it sounds like he just sleeping naked now and not like he considered them and said, I'll put some clothes on. Yeah, he was. <laughs> like, he literally changed his habit a little bit. He's right. like, I'm still going to sleep naked, but I did have my schlong hanging out when I was, you know, eating breakfast right. and making my to. bed, but uh, I'll change it, you know? Right. I, I'll put some shorts on. Like, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think that they're kind of ask, asking a lot because, like I said, you said he's, he's sleeping naked. He gets up, put shorts on. You might see him for a second where he's naked. Otherwise, yeah, I mean, he's... He still got shorts on. He's covering the part that mm-hmm. needs to be covered. At that point, stop looking in his house then if you know that he's going to be naked. Stop looking in the house. And I was thinking too, before we even started reading the story, I was like, what's probably happening is the the fact that they saw him naked once and this was a concern to them caused them to keep looking more and more often and making it a problem for themselves. Like, is he still in there sleeping naked? And then they're looking to see if he's sleeping naked rather than just like, just ignore his house. They're just like, Hey, honey, he's still naked. Like, yeah. <laughs> come here. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think my thing is, he um, he had the routine first. <laughs> just to, yeah, like he was saying, just because you moved in 
doesn't necessarily mean I have to change anything. And then the dad coming in and ordering it. Yeah. I would start sleeping. I would start doing more stuff naked just in spite. Yeah. But he doesn't want to get blinds. I get that. Just doing I, yoga in front of the window. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> I, I sleep with the... Uh, I have my blinds open, but like mine, all it is is just the sunlight. Like I'm kind of, I'm in the basement. So like. Brandon, do you sleep naked now? Oh, no. Do oh. tell. No, not yet. Brand- Brandon, you like feet? Your feet? <laughs> <laughs> Send me feet pics. No. Right. <laughs> uh, but no. That. And, and the thing is, why he could either, A, get some cheap blinds. Like, there's some blinds that cover, but there's still light that comes in. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the ones I have. They still they still bring in light, but I just keep them open because I just, I like waking up to the sun. But why don't you close your blinds then? If yeah. you're the one with the problem, close your blinds. Like, you literally have control over that. Mm-hmm. He does not have blinds. You do. Mm-hmm. So top comment, not the asshole. Some commenters are suggesting OP should put blinds up. If the neighbor is bothered, then they should put up their blinds. Why is this a problem for OP to solve? Like you said, another one, which is a good suggestion because I've seen this before and it, I think it would be good. Not the asshole, but offering another simple solution. I got a bunch of frosty rainbow window cling stuff. So it distorts what you're seeing from the outside and actually mm. makes the sunlight extra pretty. Plus, you really only need to put it at the bottom part of the window to essentially blur out everything. As long as you're not purposely trying to show yourself to the world like that in, from your house. I mean, I guess if you want to do it other places, sure. But <laughs> from your house, <laughs> uh, <laughs> then, I mean, you're good. I think the the window thing is a great suggestion. He should probably do that. And my other final thought, why are you hating on a Dobby cosplay? It was fire. I All know right. it was fire. That Everyone, was thank you for joining us for the Comfort Level Quit podcast. Being a Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Steph. He needs to stop hating. All right. Um, we'll see you guys next week. Probably an incel. I miss Thanks my cousin. Thanks so much. Yeah. That's see you crazy. soon, Sam. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.